Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Flaminia, a knitter from Italy, and today we'll be talking about everything I knit in 2023. One of the first videos updated on my channel is actually an everything I knit in 2022 video and since I recorded that one I couldn't wait to film this one because I don't know I feel like it's really satisfying to just see everything I you knit in a year because when you're actually maybe just thinking about them and you don't have any everything collected you may think you know I didn't really knit much this year but <laughs> I actually knitted a lot this year and disclaimer, I, yes, we're all in different paths of lives and people have different hours available on their day to knit. And I'm a student, so I have a decent amount to knit. And also to, this year I got injured. So I produce many Finnish items in the span of like February to April, something like that. Then after that, I stopped knitting for like three months, but still I have a lot to show you. I filmed a video about like all the statistics on this past year of my knitting in my last YouTube video, if you wanted to see that. But yeah, just to for reference, I think I knitted about 22 garments and some accessories. I'll be showing you all the garments I made for myself plus the pictures of some garments that I gifted because I feel like I'm still pretty attached to them and you know, I still knitted them and they took quite a lot of time because they weren't just little accessories that I gifted. While all of those little accessories that I gifted, I won't be showing. I just have four accessories that I knit for myself and I'll be showing all of my knits in a roughly chronological order and I will consider uh, my 2023 knits, all the knits that I finished in um, 2023, like some, just one I think. One started in 2022, but I finished it in 2023, and that I'll show it on this video, while some things that I started this year but that I didn't finish, I won't show. They will be on the, hopefully, everything I need in 2024 video, which, which sounds very scary. And in this video, I'll try to focus to tell you if I'd renewed the pattern, how the pattern was, if it was cleared or not, or how the yarn held up. Because now that time has passed, I'm able to tell you that versus when the piece was new. So I hope you'll enjoy it. But yeah, I think that last things I have to say is um, I'm wearing just a neutral base layer outfit, a tank top in a pair of jeans, which is usually what I wear, also the hoops. It's just my usual everyday wear with the jewelry and stuff. <laughs> That's usually how it looks like. So maybe this is the more like realistic way to show off a garment. And I'll try everything on except for like a dress because you know, I'd take, I'd have to take everything off and I have really good pictures of that. So I'm gonna put it on the screen. And also I link, I'll try to link everything in the description box but i know that description box have they had they limit you on how many characters you can uh put in the description box so i hope everything will fit in but if they don't fit just feel free to drop a comment down below and like in general if you have some questions i love interacting with you guys so that's that and also my measurement will be in the description box as well in the very bottom so if you want to see like more or less how a size that I made fit on my body with my measurements that's available to you as well and if I look this way it's because I have my mom's computer because mine is broken at the moment my mom's computer with my Ravelry open and if you hear like some of papery noise it's because I have my um, physical knitting journal as a backup <laughs> in case any anything happens I have no idea <laughs> but yeah I think I'll be, I'll do the satisfying moment thing when I'll show you all of the piles because we have three piles and I think last year we had one. So, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. First pile, second pile, third pile. So yeah, as you can see, this will be a really long one. So go grab yourself some knitting or some snacks and get cozy. So I think we can get started. 
and in retrospect the way I piled the knits is not very um, clever because I put the one that I need first on the bottom and yeah so we'll manage so I think we can get started with the first garment which is definitely one of the hardest things I did this year just because I self-drafted this and this was a gift for my brother so it was a you know I designed it myself and it was for a male figure and so I had to do a lot of math and I took inspiration from one of his favorite like sweaters that he likes to fit off. I measured it and I went from there on because I really didn't know which start, but this is really beautiful. And I used Lashmir X from Lane Mondial, which is an Italian brand. And this yarn is 93% uh, recycled cashmere and 3% recycled wool. So that's really cool. But um, as this is all from recycled fiber, it is a bit uh, fragile. It didn't give me any problems working with it, but when I was doing the bind offs and basically it took me only from January 3rd to January 19th because I just had to do the body, which is, you know, drop shoulders worked in the round on four millimeter needles and three millimeter needles for the neckline and I inserted an elastic in the neckline, yes. And my mom did the sleeves like flat and then I seamed it and let me tell you it was terrible, <laughs> like not the finished look. The finished look is really pretty but having to sew and I don't know why I didn't think about that. I could have used another yarn in a similar color to sew the sweater together and basically um also that, that was quite fun it was live in a podcast episode where I tried this on and I did like this you know and the cuff was a bit tight and I snagged the 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 seam and I was like what the hell did I just do and oh my gosh this yarn is quite um precious but it feels lovely and look at the shape and I feel like the cables look really nice even though it is not the rounder of the yarns but it is very beautiful and yeah I had to fudge a little bit and have two cables near each other um underneath the armpits just because I this is a pretty big repeat and um I don't I don't know I just didn't know how to match this up to the exact, you know, I don't, didn't want this to be too big. Um, so yeah, you know, I was just working with my knowledge at the time and I really want to make one for me as well. And maybe Red Up a Pattern always said, say this, but you know, we'll see. But I really, really want one for myself. And I love the color. I think it's definitely in my seasonal color palette should be a winter cool cool winter or a winter in general i look good in black and in white and jewel colors and cool toned colors and i wore this uh to my last exams and <laughs> basically my friends were like oh my god you did a really good skincare today and i'm like what do you mean and like oh you're glowing and and i was like I think that's the jumper. I think that's just the jumper that it's in my colors. And yeah, so they were like, girl, you glow in. And I'm like, thank you. This was really good. And so the yarn, of course, is spilling. Oh my gosh, it's spilling very badly. Oh my God, I think this is the back. Ooh, this is the back hem. That's why I've never noticed because I usually don't look like myself like this, but... You can see here it's spilling really bad. I don't know how to show you. Yeah, but I noticed when I was wearing it on the sleeves, which is of course the case, but I think this is one of those yarns that once you deep it, it looks brand new. I'll update you on that, I guess, but it looks really good. Yes, and also I didn't prep 
any of these sweaters because I wanted to show you the wear on them. And yeah, this wasn't worn a lot actually. My brother wore it like three times and I wore it two times. So it is quite a lot of filling, but for the softness, it's all worth it in my opinion. I am pretty sensitive to anything really. So uh, this is one of the only fabrics I don't find itchy and that's not really good for my wallet. I cannot um, afford this yarn. Uh, as it is recycled, it is not as pricey as uh, like first used cashmere, but it's still pricey. This was around like 125 uh, price mark, a euros price mark, because we had to we had to buy a lot of them. They were 25 gram skeins, and I think they were eight to nine euros each, and we had to use around 20 something like that so this was pricey but fortunately enough my mom paid for the yarn and i made the sweater so that worked well for me i'll remake it again soon i hope i have to buy the yarn for that but i will remake it uh next uh next garment that i finished is one of my favorites it made it into my flops video that i made just because for how beautiful it is, I want to wear it more, but as I said, I'm sensitive to anything and everything, so <laughs> it didn't really work. But it is my gorgeous um, Olive Cardigan V-neck by Pernille Larsen, the designer behind the Native Fall Off for Olive Designs. And this is made in a size small in uh, one strand of Muc Spire Baby Merino, something like that. It, I bought this yarn in Norway, it was like a fingering weight merino superwash thingy. And I bought it at the supermarket and I wanted to buy it at the supermarket because since I heard uh, Inga say that in Norway you found yarn at the supermarket, but like, mom, I don't care, we're here on a cruise, we're just tackling every single supermarket in the town because I want to find yarn. And, and we did, and I bought this beautiful color, and this is held with um, two strands of drop skid silk mohair, and that's why I don't wear this a ton. You know, it's very, I don't know if it's very springy and feminine, but it is very, very, very warm. I think it's one of the warmest thing I made, and it's very scratchy on bare skin, so I don't know why I had the idea of putting a tank top on. Oh my gosh, this Ah, oh, this hurts. Uh, I mean, it's not so bad, but I can feel them every single strand of mohair in this. But it looks so nice. Like, you cannot really see the bottom of it. I adjusted. Okay, you can see it reaches like nearly the end of my butt. And this grew a lot, a lot in blocking. That's why you can also see that the top bottom is quite low, like my what is it? My belly button is here and here is the thingy, but I love the buttons. And I actually never checked on the wear on this cardigan because I wore it like I think five times, which is not too bad, I guess, Ugh, for like how scratchy and warm it is. And here it's not that cold, so I really need to feel very, very cold to wear this. But uh, I don't think there is, it shows anywhere. And this also has to do with the mohair. I think like it is very weird because it flattened a lot. Like if you can see, this is really flat and then all the mohair is just going in one direction because I keep this folded a lot. And that's what happens, right? I think I don't usually use mohair, so I don't know, but it flattens a little bit. And, but yeah, I also made another one as a gift but it's pretty, it's pretty identical and it was cropped. And I kind of wish mine was like that because that was really cute, but this gives off a different vibe and I kind of like it. I don't have another cardigan like this. You know, it's not that bad next to skin now that I'm feeling it, maybe because the mohair flattened a little bit, but you know, I still don't reach for it that often, but I feel like this outfit is quite cute. And I love blue, so usually people is like triggered 
by seeing a person wearing light blue sweaters with light blue jeans but i'm totally up for it so yeah i love this i don't know about the wear like i i think i can say that usually again mohair garments tend to uh, resist to the first round of peeling better than non mohair garment but this is really warm so i'm gonna take this off and but I really love this and the pattern was clear and I would say I'd remake it again, but I already made it again. So I guess that's a testament for the quality of this one, which is a bit hit and miss with knitting for olive patterns. This was pretty clear and it was also charted, but I made another pattern from them um, uh, closer. I think it's the last garment of this year and that wasn't clear, but we'll get to that. I think I need to speed up a little bit. <laughs> But yeah, so um, next garment is I think the one of the biggest flops of this year, not because it looks bad or anything, but just because I was doing the videos, the flop videos, and I totally forgot of the existence of this. And then I was looking at my um, knitting journal and I was like, oh my God, sh this thing exists. And it has very bad folding lines because I've never worn it once. I mean, I wore it for the podcast in which I finished it, but... I totally forgot. So what is this? It's my second, um, oh, this kind of looks cute. Oh, shut up. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a, I don't know. It's a Stockholm sleepover v-neck and by Petit Knit. And I knitted this in a reclaimed yarn from a sweater that I unraveled that actually my grandmother made. So yeah. This is rolling in. This was very badly folded. <laughs> and it looks really nice now that I put it on. And it actually, I think that this color suits me. It's one of those reds that suit me because it is pretty cool toned, you know? And I actually really like this outfit. Oh my gosh. I was like, yeah, maybe if, someone's, if someone wants it, I could give it away. But, you know, I don't wear vests because we don't have, we don't really have transitional weather here or at least we have transitional weather but it comes so late that when it comes you want to wear sweaters you don't want to wear vests or at least that's how I feel and yeah I this is the second one I made last year I made a black one because this was a color work sweater and it was half half um red and half black and I didn't wear the black one <laughs> I mean that one I wore once or twice I think so I guess you know, this is pretty cute and I am like well made, I think. And I modified the thing, the pattern. I didn't modify the pattern. Um, let me rub my mind around it. My gauge was different and I modified, I made it like a very, I think I made it to Excel size to have like a medium because I wanted it to be more oversized because I wanted it to cover more of my shoulders, I guess. And I made the tie and bind offs on all the bind offs. And yeah, it is cropped because I wanted it to be cropped because the black one was a bit longer and I don't know, I just wanted it to be a little bit shorter. So I made it shorter, but I never wore it. So again, here again, I cannot comment about the, um, wear of the yarn but i can say i feel like the cute the cutest and the coolest person in the room wearing this vest which is good <laughs> so maybe i should wear it more who knows where life takes us but yeah as i'm not a huge vest girly if i don't wear this i'll maybe consider selling it if someone wants it <laughs> um but yeah this is really cute and yeah so i think that this time while i knitted this garment i broke my foot as i told you i got injured and yes this oh my gosh and um i knitted a little bit of this in the emergency room i bought you know i brought my knitting with me because i was like I don't know if my foot is broken, but I don't think I'll wait less than like six hours. Fortunately, I waited just three hours because 
like my injury was pretty serious and it wasn't that serious i mean the bone was broken and uh, they put me up in the list because I, w I really was in pain and i couldn't walk that's just why but that's not the argument of the, this this video but i remember blocking this was a torture because i was with my what's it called the racks um because in italian those things are called stampelle and stampelle is also the uh, clothing hanger <laughs> the, so I, i'm confused on how you say that in english but so this is probably unexpectedly the most worn garment i knitted this year and it looks really nice and it is a bit scratchy but it is a uh, cardigan number eight by my favorite things knitwear and if you know the pattern you can visibly see that uh, i omitted the pockets because the original pattern has pockets and I didn't need the pockets. So I did, um, I knitted this in um, Jobs Alaska in the color 02 off white. And the um, funny thing in this is that uh, this yarn became very different things that I frogged. And, you know, every child that I made took more yarn. So I, I think there are like four different dye lots in this cardigan, but you cannot see. It's pretty consistent, so that's fine. And I made a size small, I think, yes. And I knitted this, I think, on the recommended needles, which is fire, I think, yes. And yeah, this is a bit rustic. I don't usually wear this next to skin, but Maybe I should wear them more. The fact is that I am trying them on now and they're not really scratchy, but I know that when I get a little bit warmer in them, they will start to really feel unbearable. So yeah, this is um, a bit cropped. Is this cropped? It's like a normal length. These are, these are the this, this start of my hip bones, I guess. So I love how it fits and is it, it's, you know, very versatile white cardigan <laughs> that's it uh i think i need a, another one in black in a softer yarn and every time i wear this i feel again the coolest person in the room knowing that i wore this and for how much i worn this i think i did it twice and once or twice maybe once or twice yeah once or twice i don't remember but it's not it hasn't peeled since then i wore it a lot in scotland because um i asked venicia how cold it was when i was um you know packing my things to go to scotland and she said you know it's not that cold but <laughs> it was basically 10 degrees sometimes and it was pretty windy so that's basically winter in italy it's summer in scotland i mean maybe i got there and i wasn't lucky with the weather but thankfully i packed this because i would have freezed to death and yes i wore this a lot and you know this is a pretty it's a pretty hard yarn which is not the best for my skin but i feel like this will stay in my wardrobe for a long time i don't know i love this and yeah, I was really kidding it at the start of the year. I was making very cool things, uh, apart from the vest that I did for once, but that's fine. Uh, next, I think, uh, yes, I started my excavation blanket, which I'll just show you because, you know, it's a blanket and it's fine that I didn't finish it in the year, but I don't know. I feel like it deserves a little bit of exposure. This is not working. Okay. It, this is really big. Yes, and I found my god, no. Okay. And I finally decided that uh, I should try to make it rectangular. So um, if you can see, this is the corner and I'm starting to knit with decreases so it ends up straight on another end and i'm continuing to um increase on the other end so the stitch count should remain the same and this should come out 
how I want this. And it's really big and I love it. But yes, um, I worked on uh, like half of it, uh, very close together. And then I kind of gave up because it was getting really warm and it was summer. And also I didn't have needles that were long enough to hold this and it was heavy and but yeah I really want to finish this soon like and by soon I hope I mean uh before the year ends before 2024 ends because basically I want to start another blanket but I don't want to be super extra crazy and start a blanket while this blanket is not done <sighs> so yeah excavation blanket baby I cannot wait to have you done but I need to work on you because you won't get done just by yourself okay then I made two of my favorite things knitwear patterns at the same time and they're masterpieces let me tell you this is one of my favorites it looks so good the stitch pattern is so good but it's so heavy but it is sweater number 19 and I don't know why this doesn't have the same eye hype of other patterns of hers and this doesn't have short rows unfortunately because I don't think that's possible like I'm not a designer but I have no idea either way I put a just a tie to know what the back is because you know you don't have short rows but the front and the back are different by like the stitch count I think and this was the first time that I learned um um what's it called tubular bind off for two by two rib it took a long time but yeah uh i cropped it i think by half of the body like that i mean not maybe half but i think by a good 10 centimeters because this texture pattern uh really eats up a lot of yarn but um, I've been worn this a lot again because it's one of those sweaters that which you can wear only if it's really really cold in Italy. <laughs> and but I love the construction. I had so much fun knitting this. Um, basically, you start from the neck. So I also did a tubular cast on for the two by two, which was fun as well. I felt a professional knitter doing this and. You have, I don't know, it's basically a continuous shoulder construction. You have this line of increases where you increase for the back, for the front of the back in pattern. And um, it was a little bit hard on my hands, the increasing in pattern, but that was, it was fun, you know? I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit weird, even if something hurts my hands, but it's fun. It's fun, it doesn't hurt my hands, it's just fun, you know? And then uh, you start increasing for like the shoulder cap so you don't have this is not picked up before starting the pattern I thought that you just made this and then just went down um how's it called like knitting flat the front and the back but this is like all shaped in the round and I just love every detail of it you know I wish it had short rows because as you can see bunches up a little bit over here but I think that's also the look because it's, <laughs> I mean that's not the look. I would prefer not to have this, but I think that it doesn't look as bad as on a um, like a crew neck raglan. I think that a crew neck raglan without the short rows, you can really see that something it's weird. While with this, you have so much going on that you're not seeing like oh my gosh, it bunches up a little bit at the front. Like it's not that. But this also, um, the yarn is soft, but it, it kind of irritates me. So um, I need to wear something with a high turtleneck underneath. And it also adds to the fact that I cannot wear it. I cannot wear it because it's too warm because I have to keep in account also the underneath layer, which will be long sleeve with a turtleneck, which, uh, which will just, add up to the warmness of the situation <laughs> but I wore it where my boyfriend lives 
because I he was in the really north part of Italy and that's it's of course cooler there and I love it and I'm so proud of this and will I remake it again yes but I don't know if I need two of them like you know the pattern was really clear and enjoyable that I would remake it again but I don't know how many of these I need so yeah and I also really enjoyed the color of it I think I don't know I, I feel pretty chic with this with gold hoops and not very good hair you know it puts up my confidence a little bit and as the you know it's not a raglan you have a lot of like exposed i don't know i feel like it opens up my chest a lot so that's great then the next pattern i made from her it's oh my gosh the camisole number five which again it's one of my most worn pieces um if you don't mind i'll try trying it on um with this like tank top underneath so yeah uh this is pretty famous pattern this is camisole number five by my favorite things knitwear and it was really difficult for me to find the courage in starting this project with this yarn in particular because this was um of an Italian really really old yarn and it was 100% mercerized cotton. I literally um, stalked for days the uh, you know the hashtag on Instagram of the camisole number five with the hope that I could find a version in cotton not in cotton merino not in merino in cotton and i couldn't find one so i was like you know what i think I, sh I should just give it a try and then if it fails it fails horribly and then i'll learn my lesson but it's actually pretty successful my boyfriend loves how <laughs> this fits on me and also do oh a pigeon and also do love how it fits because um first of all the cotton still has stretch and it didn't stretch out you know I still feel it is really tight fitting, even if I wore it a lot. I mean, I think that's also because I have something underneath, but you know, it's basically, it basically looks brand new as I finish. It doesn't look like it has grown on me a lot. Um, and I love how the double knitting at the neck and at the shoulders just transform the entire piece. It is just really worth it and I was pretty proud of myself because I uh, heard people say that uh, the body takes a long time and it is a slog but I actually found it pretty um I loved seeing this grow so it wasn't as much of a slog and I ended up with this beautiful piece which I wore a lot this is not the most practical when it is peak of summer here because um it has a high neck and uh i don't of course this is not bra friendly but i don't mind as it is like high neck i struggle a little bit to wear this when it's really really warm and i usually don't wear this when it's really really warm i needed this because i wanted it to i wanted something cool enough to wear to uni because i start my lessons usually start in um half mid of september and it's still super super hot here so uh, but i was like i don't want to wear super skinny uh, little tops i don't know it just felt inappropriate for some reason but i also do wear them now but i was like if i you know i want to have an option when uh for when i didn't want to wear those like just basic camisoles and those this was really successful and many people complimented me on that and i would remake this again but i think i, I would want to purchase a yarn which is really similar to this but i don't know which one yet and i also don't know about the color but i was about to start another one of these just soon after i finished this so really recommend and the pattern was really clear and the next one i started is 
really funny because if you <laughs> if you watch my podcast episodes this took me like five months to finish but it is my classic white sweaters i think it was one of my yearly goal to make just a plain white stocking up sweater and this is uh the i said this so many times uh cozy classic light by jesse made designs and i love how it looks because it looks really classy but i don't wear this a lot because it the yarn is a bit scratchy, <laughs> uh, yeah. And also, um, I wanted to try to wear this with this tank top and see if the neck was high enough that, you know, without seeing it too much, it kind of covered. So maybe this is a good option, but you can kind of see it from underneath. And I knitted this again with the vintage yarn that my mom had in stash, so, I was really proud of myself because she didn't know what to use it for. You can kind of see the short rows. Yeah, definitely. Because I just made it like one row below what they should have been and you can kind of see them, but it's fine. And, but yeah, I would remake this again, yes. And oh yeah, this is also off gauge. So you can see it's not as see-through as the pattern suggested because I went down like a needle size and i'm also a tight knitter so another problem is that the sleeves are quite fitted and i also frogged the sleeves once because they were fitted and i made it a second time and they're fitted again and so it is really difficult to wear things underneath underneath but it's fine i don't know about this like it, lo it looks really fancy not fancy it looks classy so I'll just try to wear it more and then decide on its fate later. It's kind of hard to decide on sweaters if you live here because, you know, it's not that cold. But I love making them, so that's fine. Then, the one of the other Magnus Opuses, I mean, Magni Opus, because, oh my gosh. What's the plural of Magnus Opus? Opus is second declination. Either way, yeah, I started Latin, so I try to remember, but I think it's third, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, the, uh... <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. This is a test knit that I did for Friday Knits. And this is the Sweetheart Revenge dress. And as you can see, it has a beautiful like sweetheart detail and, it ha and you have these beautiful like increases and decreases on the bust, which don't shape anything. They're just for the look, but you know, they're op optional, but why would you choose to not knit them? <laughs> and you have um, long sleeves. You have a lot of options. You have just short sleeves that come up like to here, or you have uh, long sleeves, as I said, but I think you could also just make the strap and call it a day, like the strap, yes, because you make a strap and then you pick up stitches, so I think that if you wanted uh, like sleeveless, sleeveless top, that would be quite easy to modify, and um, you have the top option, like just knit it as a top, which looks really nice. And I'll probably want to make that. And it's one of those things which you want to make, but you probably won't make, unfortunately. And you have, so I made the dress long sleeve and I also added the split, which is, um, yeah, again, optional, but it's really just easy to add to anything. You just start knitting flat <laughs> at some point. And this is made with um, Mayflower, Mayflower One Class Cashmere, I think. And it is a sock yarn, and I chose a, and I chose a sock yarn because, um, first of all, it's supposed to be softer because it has some nylon and some cashmere. And as I am again sensitive, and again, I should wear this really next to skin. This has like 20 centimeters negative ease. 
it should be really fitted and it is and um, I didn't want this to wear holes and I don't know why they should but just prevention <laughs> um, and sock yarns are made to uh, resist to just a more hardcore um, hardcore wear I guess and uh, I wore it once and actually the most of the times so I wore it inside the house because I just wanted to see him on and um, but yeah I also wore it I think once outside but yeah I really suggest the pattern it was great it was great testing for um, Phoebe and the pattern is beautiful like look at this it's beautiful and you know, I'd remake it again, not as a dress, because I already have the dress, if it makes sense. But I really suggest making the dress. There are also other testers, beautiful versions, they are beautiful. Like, I think one, it's just um, maxi length with a slit, and I was like, oh my gosh, and that was black, so how classy, beautiful. Mm. <sighs> I cannot say enough good, thing, good things about this. Then we have the biggest plop of the year. <laughs> which I won't go into too much detail on. <laughs> it's just an, just basic, like, camisole number six, which I guess it doesn't look as um, bad. Like, it doesn't look bad, but it just doesn't give anything. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's this, which I guess is fine, but I really dislike the yarn. It's Drops Paris, and it is... Uh, just worsted weight, iron weight cotton, and it just feels papery. And this has, like, this is too structured. Like, it has no drape whatsoever. I made a size small, and, you know, the pattern is nice, but the yarn I use for it really doesn't make it justice. And I think, you know, that the ends, you can see them are unraveling also somewhere in the back. But yeah, I made it because I wanted to use up the yarn. So I don't know what to do with it because, yeah, what should I do? Should I sell this? But I'm, but I'm like, if I don't like it, why selling it to people, you know? I don't feel comfortable with that. So um, I'll maybe gift it to someone um, or maybe repurpose the yarn to make something but I don't even know what I will make this with this yarn because the yarn is the problem it's not the pattern you know okay on to the second pile this is actually quite fun and if you saw last year's video you remember something similar to this and this is a self-drafted sweater that I made because and I also made a project vlog on this because basically I wanted to see if I could knit my first ever sweater, but, you know, make it better. And I think I did make it better. Useless to say that, uh, you know, the yarn is really nice, but it is 100% of Paca and it is bulky weight yarn. I didn't get the opportunity to wear this, but it looks really nice and I'm super proud. The only thing that bothers me a little bit, that one sleeve is a bit bigger than the other in circumference, because basically here I included the raglan stitches into the sleeve while here I didn't. And yes, so here you can see I included it and I can see because I'm a knitter and I know, but I don't think people notice. But you know, you can see it's a little bit bigger, whatever. I think I did three stitches raglan and one by one and this actually fits really nicely because I added short rows and I felt very, very proud and a grown up knitter for doing that. And I felt like that when I finished it, it was quite short, but that's actually, it's actually a nice length. But I was playing your chicken so badly for this piece. And you can see it's not that oversized in the body, but it's fine. I like it. I like it a lot and I'm super proud of myself and I love the color. I really want to knit something in this exact color which I'll get to wear more because you know that's the wear on this is just a failure in just from the start because you know it's so bulky which I probably won't wear so much. Next 
I knitted my Sophie shawl, which is pretty fun. I started my Sophie shawl and I finished it in like July, which is like, why did you do that? And I'm like, um, because I was traveling. So how do you do that? I was traveling and I needed this, and I needed some like small project. You know, this is not small by any means, but it was small at the start. And I love this. Again, didn't wear it a lot because I don't need this, this this chunky scarf. But in places where it was colder, I wore this. Like in Prague over the New Year, I wore it. And I don't know. I feel like just just boost my confidence for like no reason at all but i love wearing it and i just feel the chicest and yeah i don't think i need to go into more detail on this i mean the yarn is um drops nepal which is pretty soft but still a bit scratchy on me but as it is not so tight fitting i can wear this and this is just garter stitch with a lovely built-in eye cord and i'm pretty sure you've heard talking about this so much that you don't want to hear it again so it's fine i needed a soapy shawl would i remake this again yes i don't know if i need it but yes i would then i made my blouse number one by my pretty things knit to wear and this is also very very beautiful and the yarn is again a bit stiff because i use 100 percent cotton but i don't mind it on this i would love to knit another version of this in black that would be beautiful in like um a viking garn bambino which is so 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 jp and lovely and i think it would be very very nice and i would also go a size up because, you know, it's not fit. I mean, it's definitely fit, but it's not to be, uh, this is not supposed to be oversized. So is it? No, I think it's supposed to have a negative ease on the bust. So yeah, of course I wouldn't wear this with this camisole underneath, but it looks really nice, I think. And it is a contiguous shoulder construction. And I don't know, it's just, fits really nicely and as the as sweater number 19 it just opens up your chest a lot and without anything underneath it looks just really feminine and elegant that's why I want one in black and this has some like the pattern has somewhat, somewhat of a loose gauge but of course wasn't uh, able to um, get that gauge because I'm, I'm just a tight knitter and I use 4.5 millimeter needles and I knitted a size medium which is usually a size up yes and I used an Italian yarn which is called Dune by Bardelli Filati which it's a brand I don't really know but my mom kind of bought it at a local supermarket and I noticed the ends are coming undone in this which is not the best but I guess that with plant fibers you can expect this but yeah I would love to make a drapier version um, and a more oversized version but overall success would we'll do this again definitely and I don't usually check on the wear on my cotton garment there is nowhere to this this is the next one and this is the petal drop camisole by uh florence miller i won't try this on because i think this would look really really ugly on top of this but it is just a really easy um um all over lace pattern this is the first time i did lace and i think the only time i did lace uh, no not the only time but you know I did it two times so this was the first one and it really helped me getting away from the thought of that um, lace was really difficult 
so there was this was really easy and the yarn i love the yarn yes the this is kind of a um similar um fabric to the one that i want to use for my blouse number one like for reference it's just really really drapey and i found that this yarn just blocked very good and it looks really good in textures the only thing is that i guess it stretches out where you know this is the part where my hips are i usually don't find that in camisole there are hip increases they are usually bust increases so yeah but it's stretched out and i try to re-block it but i don't think it'll go back to normal ever and it doesn't bother me because it is on the bottom of things and i can always like tuck the camisole in and whatever but yeah, this was a test knit that I did for Florence and it was really fun and I was really proud of myself for getting chosen, I guess, because she trusted me enough to test knit one of her patterns. I don't know why I feel that way, but I just do. And this is knitted from the bottom up. So yes, the only thing I would maybe um, change is the placement on the straps. I don't know if yeah, it's definitely the eye cord that like pulled them in a little bit, but not too much, like it's how the pattern is supposed to be. But I maybe want them to be a little bit more on this side, like not so much closed into the front. But my gosh, can you just keep, <laughs> um, you know, the straps line up with one of the, you know, ribbed columns. So I don't know how that would work. So this is really good and I would remake this again, but I don't know if I need a, another one of these, you know, but I really suggest you to look this pattern up. It's really nice. And she also has a matching um, free pattern for socks. And I thought many times about knitting that pair just because I wanted to have matching, matching camisole and socks which is not something that you would wear um together <laughs> maybe because you know you wouldn't wear woolen socks at the same time that you wear this just then <laughs> next one i mean i thought i uh, i think i yeah i skipped one guys i skipped one before like uh, previously in the year i made this at the top as a test knit for uh, knitting Sophie. I'll put up a picture, I won't try this on. This is kind of a flop because I don't really like how it fits. Like, um, I think it's because of my like body measurements, but this, uh, this pattern goes off of the um, waist measurements instead of the bust measurement. And I think that if your bust measurement is like bigger or smaller, um then what it is supposed to be for like the standard sizing that designers use for grading their patterns i think it could look a bit weird on top and the straps sit in a weird way and i yeah i talked about this in my flops video so if you want to see if you want to hear more about that and how you could accommodate for you know your bus measurements a little bit better i have uh, you know i speak about that a little bit there but yeah this is also knitted bottom up and it is really cute it has an open back so the design is cute but i don't know if it's made for my body shape <laughs> i think that if you're a bit more like rectangular it would work better for you and yes, the next one is another test knit, I think. Let me check. Yes, this is so cute. And again, I think it's the red color, which I'm not really drawn towards. But I think I should wear this more. This is the Epiphany Cardigan by... <laughs> it's by Anna Hermann Sorensen. That's so wrong. <laughs> but she is... Danish and I don't know she just did a test call for this and I had this um, random acrylic blend the mohair thingy 
um, which I really want to use up. And again, it was like in my mom's stash, so I didn't buy it. So I, I was never drawn to pick this up and use it because <laughs> this is so scratchy. This is so scratchy and um, it hurts. That's why I never wore this, but this is so cute. Like, look at this precious boy. Oh my God. And like, I really want this to be worn. This is so cute. So, you know, I'm really on the fence on, um, how's it called? On selling this as well. First, because I don't want, like, I want the designer to feel like this item is loved and that their pattern is really good and it is really good look at this look how pretty and it also has like ruffles but i ran out of yarn so i had to i didn't have enough yarn to do the ruffle but look at this this is so cute so i'll maybe in the future consider to sell this but come on look how cute this is and but yeah this is one of those items which I don't know when I should wear this with the climate we have. And so the moral of the story is I should really reorganize my knits so that I can see the things when I'm just picking my outfits. Because if I saw this more, I would maybe have thought about wearing this. I mean, um, not about wearing this, about trying to find things to wear this with. It makes sense but really go check Anna out she is really talented and she is coming up with two designs I think I mean one she is in the process of designing and one is the Cassiopeia sweater which is uh, I was so like happy and I don't know why I was happy but I was happy because Cassiopeia is also my favorite constellation so it's like oh my gosh she's doing a Cassiopeia sweater I want to test it and yeah I didn't do it because uh, I don't know when she released the test call, but I was like, I don't have time for that, unfortunately. I don't have the yarn for that, so, but it's really pretty, so go check her out. And now I'll also show you, um, I mean, two Oslo hats. I didn't knit these at the same time, but I put it on the same page, so this they are both in the same size but uh, they look so much smaller because i don't know why i perfectly knew that petite knitter in uh, no petite knit is a much looser knitter than i am so i usually have to go up on needle size but for some reason i didn't so this is knitted in three and a half millimeter needles which gives a really tight and warm fabric which is good for a hat but they are quite fitted. Like this, I think, stretched out a lot because I wore it more. And this is knitted with, again, an old vintage Lanagato yarn, which is 150% um, merino wool and 50% alpaca. <coughs> <coughs> oh my gosh. And this is very hairy. So it does prick on my forehead when I wear it a lot like for a longer period of time why am i doing this to myself but i think it looks cute so you know if it's really cold like in prague i wore it and it worked really nicely and i don't have that many hats so it works and the other one is um i knitted with the leftovers of my um our size sweater this was like the contrast color and i don't wear this I didn't like bring this because uh, this is a bit tighter and also a bit shorter. Like if you see, it ba it barely covers my ears. And I love the black, I think it's cute, but I also ran out of yarn. So the crown is really short. So, you know, if I could just, you know, I can pull it because it's super wash yarn. So it's pretty stretchy, but it, it also bounces back. So. I wish this was a bit uh, longer, but it's not. So what can we do, guys? <laughs> if we, like, yarn chicken is yarn chicken. We can do anything about him. I didn't want to, um, like, purchase another ball of yarn just because I needed, I wanted to knit the body of the hat two centimeters longer. I just couldn't. 
bring myself to do it. And the next thing, yes, is the Alana vest. <laughs> Look at this beauty. And this is, you know, I told you I don't really wear vests. But this year, I think I wore this. Um, I, I, when did I finish it? I finished this in November. And since then, I wore it like three times, which for a vest, it's quite a lot for me. And this is also Drops Nepal, which it's one of the best yarns which I've ever, you know, which I've tried for cables because look how nice they look. They're just very plump. They're really three-dimensional and they stand out a lot. And this was the color uh, 1101, which I guess is the first one. <laughs> and this is by Irene Lin and she is a Taiwanese designer and I'd love to knit uh, more things from her because, you know, it, they all have this style like really oversized, textured and beautiful <laughs> and it has re really nice details again this has like moss stitch and under the arms there is this big chunky cable that just you know the flaps of the cables divide into the split hem and it also has a ladder blade the braid you can see here it has two by two ribbing details and this was so fun to knit and this sparked joy in me so much. This sparked so much joy in me, so I want to knit a cable sweater very, very soon. And I actually cast it on already. I just need to work on that. <laughs> but yeah, it is really, really beautiful and I'm really proud of myself. I feel like this is one of the things which really don't look hand knit because they look very yeah i mean it looks very polished and it looks really complex so usually people wouldn't guess that maybe you made that yourself but you did so be proud of that and the only thing is that i noticed in this pattern that my make one lefts are so much messier than my make one rights like look how gorgeous it wasn't that obvious in other patterns so but it is really obvious in this because, of course, it's the neckline, it is the front, but it's fine. These are make one right, I think. And this one make one left, but you, that's less visible because it is on the sides. But it's fine, whatever. I love this. And I think that the designer is a bit short because I, read, I knitted this to the recommended length and it hits about here, you know? I don't know if you can see that very well I'm on my fingertips here, but from her pictures, it looks like it hits her about here, kinda. And, you know, I'm fine with the non so long look, but at the same time, I was like, oh, I don't have to try this on because I'm needing it to the recommended length, and that will be, you know the right length, like how it should turn out. And the pile of knits, which I have to fold, is starting to look a bit concerning. <laughs> but yeah, then I started and... Oh my gosh, look how nice. It's my first ranunculus. I mean, not that I've knitted yet a second one, but I know I will. So this is my first ranunculus, either way. And this is Viking Garn Bambino in the shade 432. And I put it in my flops, even though it looks so nice, because I wanted this to have long sleeves. But long story short, I pur purchased four <laughs> balls of yarn just because I was a little bit confused on how much yarn I would need to need long sleeves. And that's maybe because I didn't read the pan correctly. That's like, I'm pretty sure that <laughs> it's that way. Uh, but yeah, I bought four and then I'm not able to find this yarn in this color anymore and I'll try to reach out to some people that have this in their stash on Ravelry but basically I just had finished the body and had the sleeves on hold and yeah I started this in August and I finished this on the 29th of November 
just because I was really sick of having this as an unfinished whip. And I'm like, listen up, I'm just going to finish this as a short sleeve because I want to get the occasion to wear it in the future, even if I don't find the yarn anymore. But it looks so nice. Let me give you a close up. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not able to tell you about the wear on this because, of course, I didn't wear it once. And it, they don't look very tight, but I just had enough y yarn to like pick up the stitches on the underarm and bind off the sleeves. So, so uh, they look a bit tight, but I love this and I cannot wait to wear this, even though it's not how I want it this to be i love this and this is the famous second um lace thingy that i knitted this year beautiful would recommend the pattern i think it wasn't necessary for me to say this like twenty thousand people and i mean this what this pattern was knitted twenty thousand times so what can i say about this I would probably need another one uh, in long sleeves with a woolier yarn. That would be very, very nice. And okay, we're coming into autumn. We're almost done. Come on. <laughs> and okay, very quickly, I knitted for my dad a zipper sweater man picture. Um, yeah, I don't have that with me. That was very cool project. I enjoyed knitting. I mean, did I enjoy knitting with that yarn? I don't know, but I enjoyed it. was an interesting experience. I don't know if it was enjoyable, but it was interesting for sure. Then I test knitted this. <coughs> oh my gosh, the fluff. This uh, Darling Cardigan by Veronica Lindberg or Kutowakika. And this is so nice. Look at this. Um, chill. Basically, uh, it's just a drop shoulder um, cardigan and it's very boxy and pretty oversized and it has two by one um, ribbing details and I used for the first time Rook's Magic Bind Up, something like that, the one that, you know, you thread through your needle through three stitches and you take one off, three stitches, take one off. That. It looks pretty nice. And this looks so, uh, I don't know, machine made. Like, I'm pretty, it's not because of my skills, but it's because of the yarn, which is really fluffy. And so you cannot see the unevenness in the tension, if I don't think there are but <laughs> either way you cannot see them and also it is very seamless the um, uh, double knitted bottom band it's very nice and the coolest part is that i added uh these um mm, how's it called uh clasp buttons oh my gosh snap buttons Sma snap buttons but they are plastic and transparent so if i go back you can maybe see the shine a little bit, but you cannot tell that if they're there, even if the cardigan is open, which is really nice. And yeah, you just, they're a little bit hard to snap it because I think I sold them with a bit too much yarn. Okay. But it really does look nice. And I cannot wear, I cannot wait to wear this in like spring with dresses. And I think this will fix the, to call the gap in my wardrobe left by this cardigan which i wanted to wear you know with a pretty white dress but you know uh this is still not the most comfortable but i can like this is pretty good next to skin for me even though it's pretty fluffy and the yarn i use for this is uh borste Tampaka by sandes garn and the color lilac or um 5043 and i enjoyed knitting with this doesn't show really much wear and 
what I was gonna say, um, well, yes, I enjoyed using this, but, uh, like, be aware, it's not something to be aware of, but that's maybe interesting to someone, um, it's not the best if your needles are very, very pointy because as when you're using like alpaca boucle, uh, your um, needle tips can get stuck in the fluff because this is really fluffy. This is just one strand and it is a bulky weight. So it is very, very fluffy. And yeah. <laughs> I think we're reaching the end because I didn't knit super much the end of the year because I, you know, gift knitting season. And I made this um, self drafted pair of gloves, which are a bit in a interesting state because they live in my jacket's pocket. And they are just self drafted panty gloves-ish style type of things with the same recycled yarn from the first sweater of the year and um yes and this also snapped like the bind off of one of the uh, of the first mitten uh glove i finished snap and i just repaired it with this yarn wait because i'm using it with this yarn, which is pretty similar color, and that is Woolly Knit British Wool, which is, you know, very easily more durable than <laughs> recycled cashmere. And in the other mitten, I bound off with the yarn just to prevent the bind off from breaking. And yes, I knitted this on 3.5 millimeter needles because that gave me a gauge I liked and if you're curious I have like all of these steps that I used to make those on my Ravelry project page which is link in the description look how nicely folded it is this is the late summer wrap I named for Olive and this is the last thing I finished I mean I have one more but I started that later so I'm doing in order of casting on so yeah and it is a wrap cardigan. And this is the pattern that I said in the beginning, which I didn't like the, um, you know, the writing style of, I guess. It was pretty confusing, co confusing. Like you can work with it, but it's not the most pleasurable experience. And before starting this project, I already, I had read on some Ravelry projects that like if you have to knit this because you like the levitate wrap it's better if you modify the gauge of the levitate wrap and just make it smaller <laughs> uh, which is you know a shame because it looks nice and it is um saddle shoulder construction and the yarn that i used it's lanagato tokapi which i cannot find anymore so maybe that's discontinued as well but i don't know and it has, um, you knit the um, button, it's not bottom band, like finishing band at the same time. And then you just cast on at one end, knit it super long and then attach it to the body. And you also have a hole to like, you know, pull the tie through. I just don't have the time to do that now. But I'll talk about this more in my next podcast episode because I didn't talk about this yet in an episode. But I modified how I attached the band to the body. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. So, yes, it's quite cute. It's cropped and it's ballet core. The color is not that fun, but <laughs> I chose the yarn. And you can tie it in the front or in the back. But yeah, straps are so damn long. It took like three three entire days just to knit these and attach them to the body. But um, would I remake this again? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. First, I don't know how many of these I need again, but 
it wasn't the best experience to knit with that pattern i don't really recommend it but if you really like the look of this thing you can you know it's it's manageable like it wasn't enjoyable but it's doable <laughs> if you can if you know what i mean and if you want to knit the levitate wrap do do that but i think that if you don't like knitting double knitting this thing this alternative with the ribbing is a bit better for your mental sanity <sighs> how do i how do i fold this i don't know but how this but how did this yarn wear i wore this two times and i mean first of all it was already pilling when i was working with it and it is mm, already fluffy and basically and i also hold that and i also held this yarn double in the um in the hope that it wouldn't peel as much and we will see in the future it's still very new so i don't know about that but yeah good finished object not the most positive experience i guess then congrats if you made it till here this is the last finished garment of 2023 and it is this beauty oh my god every time i put it on camera it looks so nice i mean also in real life but um this is quite obvious this is the stripe hype sweater by again veronica limberg or kurawakika and this is beautiful and the only thing i would say about this is i don't know if my row gauge was off or if my arms are long but i think it's the second option my arms are on the longer side and i think i i always um, find myself pulling the sleeve a little bit down and not because they are too short but you know for this oversize of a card of a, of a cardigan of a sweater i prefer them to be like this and i have some drop daisy which is the main color left so it's fine you know it's still wearable if i have my arms down it's wearable it's fine um this was so fun to knit would I remake this again? Absolutely. This was so fun. And yes, please do it. And if this is a very good first sweater, uh, but because it's pretty boxy and has basically no shaping. And I feel like you can tell by the fit, you know, it's really, really, you know, I prefer the fit of my Marseille sweater. In fact, I'm knitting, I'm knitting an, another one of that pattern, spoiler but you know if you want an easy project for once that's what i wanted for example when i casted this on i was like for once just let me need it like four rectangles <laughs> and that was good and i also pushed through my anger for a twisted rib half twisted rib technically but yeah there is a lot of it so you can substitute it but i don't know I wanted to challenge myself and I also love these contrast cuff and details. They're really, 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 really nice. And um, the only thing is that I I wore the like three times, four times. This feels like no nobody's business and I don't think I can show it in the best way but like trust me for how much i wore it this is very much pilling but this is really soft so i'm kind of leaning into forgetting this yarn and i also i don't know would want to try just using the drops daisy by itself without the stripes because you know the feel of the yarn is interrupted because you have little stripes in between the drops daisy fabric i guess so i want to try that again and see how easily shapeable it is 
I guess. Guys, I'm tired. I'm very tired. And oh, and I needed size medium in this and size small in the late summer wrap and size small in the darling cardigan. I forgot. And, but yeah, most of the times I need size small. And of course, all the sizes will be in the description box and in my Ravelry projects, always there. But yeah, uh, guys, I'm very tired. I've been standing up and trying knits for one hour and 32 minutes. And I hope this wasn't too long. <laughs> And I hope I didn't get too rambly in the end. I was kind of anxious about filming this video because I think there is a lot of expectation on this, like on this video to do really well in terms of the YouTube algorithm. And also, I don't know, I, I feel like when I watch other people version of this, I'm like, wow, she's so well-spoken. Wow, she, she is so... Um, I mean, not only she, but you know, oh, she or he, they are just so, um, yeah, interesting and like precise and telling everything that I needed to say. And, um, I'm always like, oh my God, did I, <laughs> did I like forget something that was crucial? Probably did to be fair, but it, this was really fun to, um, to film. And I hope that was fun to watch. A little tangent. I did the Duolingo English test as, you know, cert English certification for my application for the Erasmus program uh, with the university. And <laughs> I was so stressed that I think I got a grade that I don't know if I'm 100% satisfied with because that's a like C1. But I'm pretty sure I'm like more than that, to be honest. Like, but I think I practice talking in English for, you know, <laughs> one hour and a half, pretty much interruptedly, and my voice is, is crackling at this point. So yeah, I'll wrap here this video and comment down below what you were knitting on or what was your favorite project of the year or if you want to tell me if there is something that I knitted that you particularly enjoy, that's fine as well. And if you want to see more from me in this 2024, consider subscribing and like activating the bell. Is that how you say? So that you can get like notified whenever I post a video or if you don't want to activate the bell because you don't care, I will pop up in your subscription feed about once every two week with a podcast episode and sometimes with a different type of video okay don't mind me uh, i'm just sitting on a chair so if you reached this point thank you so much for sticking around and i hope i'll see you in the next one and in the meantime i wish you health and happy knitting and a big kiss for me